looking at her beautiful color. Let me get her from my backyard. Majestic, cool, Mauna Kale. All right, everybody. Aloha my kako. Lahui Hawaii. Kako ohu kalani wahilani for Lahui News. Um, Iloko ko Hawaii paaina. Coming to you in the beautiful Hawaiian Kingdom. Uh, Mauka Puea, Waianae Valley. Um, so I just wanted to do a PSA. If you folks been on my page or following on Facebook, social media, um, tomorrow is a tomorrow is a pretty big day. Um, you know, to, to if you're if you're free to go tomorrow, um, I'm making a a, a PSA Kahel for people to come down to um, the district courts and. On Punch Bowl, 770s, 777 Punch Bowl, uh, Fort Floor, Judge Castanetti. So, I'm doing a kahea in response to to Kako's um, sister Ruth Bolome, who is going to be challenging the courts tomorrow and, and challenging Judge um, Castanetti in the fraudulent um, practice of. Of giving away, giving away crown lands and giving away Kuleana lands that supposedly um, for rightful heirs. In this case, it's Ruth Bolome. Mahalo kiaku, you know that she's taking the ihe, taking a spear, you know, and, and doing what she's doing, you know, and she's she's one of many, many Kanaka, many Aloha Aina patriots that has been doing. You know, doing things, you know, not just for themselves, but for the collective, which as, which, you know, we as Kanaka, you know, we come from a people that has always been inclusive, you know, um, and it's, and I'm talking about Kapo e Kahiko. I'm talking about people before, hey, kia ola, how you, brother? I'm talking about Ishava, I'm talking about Kapo e Kahiko, people before Pa'au came from Tahiti, and from Kahiki, and you know, brought all that warring system and all that. I'm talking about Kapoe Kahiko, the first people that that our ancestors that came here, that they're always inclusive, all the way up into, you know, the illegal overthrow. You've seen my videos before, and time and time again, you, you have heard my, you've heard my my manao on, on saying that you know, a crime has been committed over 125 years ago. You know, a crime has been committed before. January 17, 1893. You can go back to 1887, the Bennett Constitution. You know, however, but a crime has been committed and still being committed, you know, towards Nakanako Ivi, you know, and um, not Aina, the lands, you know, our Aina. A crime has been committed to our people, to our resources, to our lands, you know, and like I said, you know, not only people of, of the Koko, but also, you know, also people that love Hawaii, that, that are, that are patriots, you know, because in the Hawaiian kingdom, we had, we had, we were a multi-ethnic kingdom, you know, you know, and you keep hearing me saying, you know, that true international law and U.S. constitutional law, no country can occupy another country without a treaty of annexation, which failed twice, all right, so, we have that we have that irrefutable facts evidence you know and like i said when i when i went to court i, I challenged the judge and I, I told the judge if you can show me a treaty of annexation if you can if you can show me that the hawaiian islands the hawaiian kingdom was annexed to the united states well, you can arrest me and take me right now but that never happened so tomorrow's a big day um hopefully we'll get off um, but I'm just, I'm doing a, a, a kahea, you know, and it's exciting. I mean, it's it's exciting times, you know, and like I've stated, you know, no more Hawaiians, no more Hawaii, you know, and and, and it's because we have the truth. We're standing on truth and everything that we do, we represent, we represent our kupuna that went before us and even our kupuna that's still here. 
and we're representing our Nakeki who are here and our Namo'opuna, you know, who are coming, you know. And everything that we do, we try to do to the best of our ability to come from a place of Pono. I just want to say, Aloha kikahi kikahi, love one another. My um, poina ya oko, kuumo iwahine liliu kalani ame natupuna. Please never forget our beloved Queen Liliu and our ancestors that went before. Holomua, strive to go forward. Kulie kanu, strive to your highest. Kupa, stand firm. Kupono, stand righteous. And kupono, I mean, kupono, stand righteous. Kupa, stand firm. And kuhaahel, stand proud. So we're here at uh, Kahumana building once again, getting ready to go into to work. Uh, so the Lahui, a lot of us will show up. Okay, Lahui Hawaii. So this is who we came to Kako this morning, Tita Ruth Bolome. So Tita, you want to share some manao before we go in? Orange downstairs, did you see Orange? Okay. Oh, no. Aloha. Thank you so much for all your support and all your love and, and outpour of aloha and um, today we're going to go in and we are going to test the system they have not followed the laws up till now and um, they're trying to um, get permission to sell my home today i have never signed a promissory note and um, i don't know how you can sell somebody's home without having them being part of the contract but we'll see their tricks and we'll deal with it as they come up. Hey -oh. So thank you so much and we'll talk to you when we get out. All right. So we got the rest of the Lahui. They stay inside, yeah? You, see all, you, see, all these, huh? you see all these guys here? What's happening? They're, they're here to make sure they can kiss. Well, we put them on the yeah, but we're not How's it, guys? 9.30, Rude is going to go to battle, so we're going in. Um, and I'll keep you guys informed after. Hello, everybody. So we just came out of court. Um, so Judge Castaneri. Hey, cousin. So it's going to be um, continued to October 23rd. I sorry that I turn off my, you know, I turn off my live feed because some just like my kupuna told me, you know, if it was put on, you know, Facebook and somehow, found, you know, was was chased back to me, maybe in some capacity they could use that to to say that Ruth Bolomay's all, you know, whatever she was fighting for would be invalid because, you know, anyway, um, so it's going to be continued to October 23rd, okay, but. Uh, Ruth did an awesome job in, in stating her position. It's my Kaiga, maybe like 25 of us will show up. Really interesting. I can't believe that they didn't bring up a lot of points. But the judge was really looking like she didn't care. She was not really paying attention. She didn't really care what Ruth was going to say, what anybody was going to say. She already had a predetermined thing in her mind that she's going to hear it. On the 20 whatever. 23rd, yes. 23rd. All right. Cousin Jana, how are you? Papa Kolea in the house. Hi, cousin. Love you. Good to see you. Uncle Kaili, come on. Puya. Ahupua. Yes. Tita Pumai. Tita Kule over here. And get broken shoulder over here. Broken chest, broken shoulder over there. Got a Pumai right there. Uncle Hanale. Yeah. Auntie Clara Pana from Maui Nui Akama, always a presence, always Tita, Tita Kapua, Filipo Kamai. So we get Uncle Glenn over here, Uncle Glenn Kila. Brother Noah over here, what's up Noah, how you doing Noah? What's up brother, you like to share someone now? 
Uh, I learned a lot today. It was worth coming. Just here for listening and learn. There's a lot more to go, long road to run. Yo, step yo. by step. Yo. Moving forward more. All right, hold on more. Lieutenant Cavallo. Cavallo. Right on. Cavallo. How's it, my brother? Oh, Cavallo. Hello. Cavallo, who are Yeah. Right on, my brother. Mahalo, mahalo, Ruth. So, go ahead. Well, so what, what, what went on and what's going on now? Uh, well, first of all, it was so great having everybody here supporting me because I we started this in 2010 and um, it's been a lonely walk because everybody kept telling me I was wrong. And, but my Na'al kept saying, nope, I know that I'm right, I just don't know how I'm right. And so I just, I was persistent, I kept looking, and the more I looked, the more the ancestors showed to me. And so um, I encourage everybody to do that, yeah. uh, to, to never give up. If your Na'al is telling you something, listen to it, yeah. you know, and follow through. But the biggest thing that I have learned is that in all of the, our warranty deeds and when people take out loans, that promissory note is what generates the currency. The bank never gives anything. They actually get paid to just walk your note to the Federal Reserve Bank because there's a law in the United States that a U.S. bank in North America cannot provide um, any kind of surety, guarantee, or their own credit to get money to loan to you. They have to go to the, the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve is taking the um, credits from your city key trust and they can take up to 10 times the amount. So in our case, there was a $300,000 um, line of credit. Now a line of credit is different than buying the house. They didn't buy anything. Mm -hmm. They just opened up a line of credit and put credit. They deposited credit mm -hmm. into an account. They did not provide any kind of money. So in all cases, it's the same thing. Everybody in here that's getting foreclosed on has provided the funding for their loan. Nobody, nobody is in default because even when they pay, it goes onto the, this general ledger which does not go into crediting the bank because the bank can't accept the payment because they never provided you anything. So it goes on to this certain type of accounting that in three years they put in what's called an OID to the IRS asking for the funds that have been abandoned on these, this accounting. No. And so that's how they get our money. But the, we're actually the funders of all of our loans. And so, you know, there's more and more fraud that keeps getting unveiled as we go through. And when they tell you to stop paying for 90 days, it's because on the 91st day, they are getting paid what's called a delinquency policy for 100% of the loan. Wow. So even if you only own $10 on a $300,000 loan, they have gotten paid $300,000. Damn. So th there's that's the illegal, That's the legal illegal crooks, eh? Yeah. <laughs> that's the legal illegal yeah. crooks, eh? And, so and she's see, exposing them. You see how they conspire to um, the banks with the courts and the state to uphold that, that these warranty deeds on a lodial title the lands are lawful, they're a color of the law, and they are not ownership of anything. Yo, Mike, October 23rd, same yeah. channel, same Still place. Exactly. We're black. So, Tito Malia, and I'm going to put the camera to your brother, my brother Mako. Hey, Kaulana, good to see you. Good to see you. It's so always yeah. such a pleasure. Thank you. Do you want to share your mana auto? Uh, no, I think everything that needed to be said was yeah. said, and I'm so happy. All right. We can flip this and we can do it faster than we ever dreamed. Yeah, yeah. Hello, I'm Hawaii. Kaulani. That we could come down here and to stand in, to stand in the Kako Tita Root Bolome, you know, because her lands are up, are up, you know, supposedly fraudulently up for sale, you know, by this oppressive illegal system that we have to live in. But that Huli is coming and it's changing. But to be here with, you know, with Root and to have her. 
put Judge Castanet in to put this system on notice, you know, which was my kai, you know, and my manao today was if Tita, big, big ups, big nui kelo to Tita Ruth for doing her due diligence of dotting her I's and crossing her T's, you know, because when she went in as a well-informed Kanaka, and for me, just my manao, if she never have all that Ike and manao, if she never do her due diligence, I would guarantee you that Judge Castanet would have ruled on selling, giving the commission, the land commission, authority to sell lands not even theirs. So we got so what she did was the what, what Judge Castaneri did was the was the only move she had was to back up and continue. But she's gonna she said she's gonna rule on that motion on in August on next one on the twenty third. Same place. So I implore all of Lahui, you guys watching this film after Brother Warren posts it up. Next month. I mean on, on all of them. yeah when I can. You know. Okay then please come down October 23rd, because you know, have more Support. people. So, right? Aloha Kako, this is Ruth Bolome reporting after our court hearing. Uh, it's September 18, 2018. So, in numerology, that's 999. <laughs> Good day. Anyway, um, today what happened was we were following up on um, the the court had put in, uh, had ruled against me in summary judgment, even though um, we were, I was given uh, notice four and a half hours after the summary judgment hearing. So um, even though I put in paperwork to try to stop or, or to um, have the order reversed or set aside in their language. What happened was um, the judge, even though I did everything she told me to do, she did a motion to strike my order. And then she responded by making a, um, granting the summary judgment to the defendant and, uh, based on um, default because I wasn't there. And the problem with that is uh, we have all kinds of evidence proving that the, the uh, bank has never provided us any money whatsoever. This bank, we have no contract with. My husband never signed any kind of contract with them. I never signed any of the promissory notes or contracts. And yet they're holding us to a debt that is non-existent. They're saying that we have defaulted on a loan which um, the bank, their bank, actually told us not to pay in order for them to start the investigation and invoking our uh, uh, title insurance. So the problem is now they're using that to as a reason to foreclose. However, we found after doing a forensic audit on the loan that the uh, bank had never um, given us any money whatsoever, that they created this certificate, some kind of investment certificate, a mortgage certificate in 2008, even though the loan, uh, the line of credit inception was in 2006. So um, it's proof that they never gave us anything because that wasn't even the bank we were dealing with. So basically what they did was they took an asset that we had that um, my husband and I paid our house in full in 1998. And then when we opened up the line of credit, um, he was told that he had to use a portion of the asset to cover the um, like security or collateral for the line of credit. Even though the line of credit was 300000 and the asset was over a million dollars. Um, at that time, it was actually about $2 million. So I did not want to sign any part of these notes or anything because I was suffering from a brain injury. And in law, that actually um, prevents somebody in that condition. They call them incompetent. So you're incompetent to sign a contract. So now we're dealing with the bank that we never had a contract with, and now they're including me in the contract that we never had a contract with. <laughs> so it's a bit confusing, but um, what we learned was they took our fully paid warranty deed asset and then they made all kinds of securities out of these and they sold it up to 40 times. So they generated, um, so it was $300,000 was the line of credit times 40. So that's $12 million that they generated off of our asset, which we never gave them permission to use. We didn't even know they were using this. 
and then they got paid off through the U.S. bailouts. I'm, I'm assuming it's the U.S. bailouts because the, the um, forensic audit said that it was paid off. And it was right around the time that the um, bailouts were happening. And Morgan Stanley and this bank were some of the banks that were being bailed out. So they got um, bailed out. They got fully paid on that. They um, required us not to pay for 90 days in order to start their investigation. They didn't tell us that on the 91st day they would be paid a um, delinquency policy. So even if on this line of credit, we only had $20 balance on there. They were entitled to get the full $300,000. So this is more than double dipping. And what I've learned is this isn't just happening to Hawaiian people. This is happening to all warranty deed people, anybody that takes out a loan. They use the promissory note as a security and they turn it into negotiable notes or bonds and they take that and they make money from these promissory notes. The bank never puts up one cent. So if the bank doesn't put up one cent, how is it that they're entitled to foreclosing on a property that you keep paying money for? In our case, you know, we would have to pay for um, a line of credit. But incredibly, in 2010, we learned that we did not own the property that we paid for in cash in 1998. And that was not told to us by our neighbor, that was told to us by the State of Hawaii Office of Hawaiian Affairs when we applied for a Kuleana land tax exemption. And so I would say that's a pretty official um, uh, uh, knowledge coming towards us and message. So I spent um, a little over a year researching, trying to disprove what they were saying. And um, after I couldn't disprove it, in fact, I did prove that what they were saying was correct with all different types of evidence from the Bureau of Conveyances, the libraries, the archives, the courthouses. Um, what we found then is that we were, um, we tried to invoke the title insurance. And um, that's why you buy title insurance, if you have a defective title. But the title companies were refusing to acknowledge that the titles were defective. And they were saying, only one of the title insurances we had said we had to go to court and get a court order in order for them to pay. And that's why I participated in this, this case. One, because they summons me and they attached me to it. And I wanted to get on the record that we are never in default. We never had a contract. With, these, um, with this company that was claiming they could now attach to our house. And we also learned through some UCC um, uh, Uniform Commercial Codes, which is 9-203B1 um, and 2. So B1 states that you have to, um, ha the bank has to have given you some kind of consideration or value in order to attach, attach and enforce um, grabbing your asset. Well, if the banks did not provide you any money, how can they say they gave you any kind of consideration or value? Now, the reason I know they didn't give us any money is because this bank was one of the FDIC banks. And there is a law, a U.S. law, that says when you have a U.S. bank and they're a U, uh, FDIC member, they are not allowed to loan their credit or to guarantee any kind of loan. They have to, um, they either have to give their own assets or um, sometimes they're allowed to give part of their depositors assets. But in this case, they got the money from another source. So that means they never provided us anything. All they did was walk the paper around. And, um, and then that, that particular um, amount of money was partially used to improve the property. And that is property we can't own. So, you know, my question is, why am I paying back something that I can never pull the value out of? You know, so there, there's been a lot of questions, you know, um, as we were going along this journey and um, we've been trying to dissect it going along the way and try to find a fair resolution. We're not trying to um, take anything from anybody or um, do something unfair. We only want things really pono and fair. And I always told them if there was something that we owed, because we signed a contract, we had an agreement 
I'll happily pay it. But they didn't give us anything. And so, and why would we pay for something that we were improving a property that we can't own? So anyway, that's kind of the gist of what happened. Um, the history of it and what happened today was after I presented all the facts, the judge recessed the case until October 23rd when they said that they would be um, giving us the ruling on uh, my motion to dismiss the case with prejudice and to have all of our assets returned to us and to have our title insurance invoked. And um, I gave a whole uh, statement of demands for restitution and resolution. And I've asked the, um, the Chief Justice to um, invoke this. Um, and um, I did it as the, the, from the office of the executress to the estates because our um, estates were never, or the, the office of the estates never gave permission to these courts, which are private entities, and corporations, they were never given a contract to um, do probate on our estates. And under the Clarefield Doctrine, please look that up, it's C-L-E-A-R-F-I-E-L-D, um, Clarefield Doctrine, um, it's a U, uh, U.S. Supreme Court ruling that says unless the court has, uh, or when they're dealing in commercial paper or debt notes, uh, that sort of thing checks. They actually are not a government agency. They are a corporation. And therefore, corporation to corporation, they need a contract. And without the contract, they cannot um, uh, adjudicate your case. They cannot reach into your trust. And that's really how they make money, is by reaching into your all capital name, City Key Trust. It's, they're here, um, it's a business to them. And as long as they can stretch out your case, they are putting their hands into your uh, your city key trust, and uh, you know they have no incentive to stop. So I want it to stop because it it takes time out of our lives, and there's other things that can be done, you know, in a more productive way. But this journey has been good because we've learned and we've. We've um, really learned about the fraud, how lands are taken, not just by, uh, from Hawaiians, but also from anybody who would uh, buy things with warranty deeds. And if you go through the foreclosure court, how the courts are assisting in the theft of lands by court order. Because if the banks never provided any kind of um, consideration or value, then they're not entitled to anything. They have no injury and they have no standing. So that's basically been the foundation of my um, arguments, along with a lot of um, la revealing layers of fraud that I found, like peeling back an onion, you just keep finding more and you're crying all the way through it. So um, I'm kind of done with the tears and would like to get to the sweetheart of all of this <laughs> and enjoy the meal at this point so anyway thank you again and maybe you would consider coming on october 23rd at 9 30 and judge jeanette castanetti's courtroom on the fourth floor he wanted me to take this land instead of my brother who was supposed to have this land and he said the reason he wanted me to take the land was one day i was going to need it to make right the wrongs wow and i had no idea what that meant i thought it meant making the land an organic farm because it was a conventional farm but today we can see he saw this and so thank you all for standing with me and coming out and awakening and and for all the fights that you do because all the, we're all doing a piece of this to right the wrongs. So thank you for everything that you're doing and all your support and love. Mahalo, Great job, great job.
Mahalo, 